Breaking news, this just in. Dietary fiber, still good for you. Sorry, kind of ours. What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about da da da, dietary fiber and all cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, Oh, the algorithm. So a new study was published from NHANES data, which if you're not familiar, NHANES is a huge, basically data bank of characteristics from various subjects that have been followed up with over the course of like 30 years or something like that. Not every subject had 30 years of follow up, but it's basically been collected, I think, over like a 30 year period. And there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subjects, I believe. Now, this new study was specifically focused on people with heart failure and how their intake of dietary fiber affected mortality from all causes and specifically from cardiovascular disease. So these were people who've been diagnosed with heart failure and the mean follow-up was around six years, just under. The subject number was 1,500. Now, that's much lower than much of the NHANES data, but remember, these are people who already have heart failure, which there was a very, very high mortality rate amongst this group of people, because if you've got pre-existing heart failure and you follow these people for six years, a lot of them are probably going to pass away. Now, this may sound morbid, but it's actually a good thing that the mortality rate was so high because it gives us more data points to look at. Sometimes in these studies, if mortality rate is relatively low, very small differences between small numbers are hard to determine if they're statistically significant. But if you have quite a bit of data, it's easy to make comparisons and see statistical difference. So the researchers looked at different quartiles of dietary fiber intake. So the reference group was dietary fiber intake of 8.8 .8 grams per day or under, 8.8 .8 to 13.8, 13.8 to 19.1, and then over 19.1. Now, when it came to all-cause mortality, what they found was a 32% risk reduction in mortality death from all causes with a fiber intake of above 19.1 compared to below 8.8. .8. So basically just adding 11 grams of fiber per day from 8.8 .8 to 19.1 decreased the risk of mortality by 32%. It was a stronger relationship to cardiovascular disease mortality. So it was a 40% reduction in the risk of cardiovascular disease mortality, meaning dying specifically from a cardiovascular event with above 19.1 grams of fiber versus below 8.8 .8 grams of fiber. Now in a subgroup analysis of people with heart failure and type 2 diabetes, the effect was actually a little bit stronger. So it decreased the risk of all-cause mortality by 41% going from 8.8 .8 grams of fiber per day to above 19.1. And for CVD, mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality amongst people who had heart failure and type 2 diabetes, it was a 46% risk reduction for mortality from cardiovascular disease in people who had type 2 diabetes. So what's my takeaway from this study? Well, my takeaway is going to be pretty similar to what I've talked about before with dietary fiber intake, which is it appears dietary fiber is good if you don't want to die early. If you would like to live longer, dietary fiber appears to be basically a longevity hack. Carnivore and people who ain't eating their vegetables, folks, will say, well, this is all garbage epidemiology and it could be reverse causation. If that was the case, we would see inconsistencies in the results. I've talked many times about how I do not think that unprocessed red meat independently increases the risk of cancer outside of saturated fat and the calories it contains and when they control for overall diet quality. There, are, there is a study looked at this very specifically in people who ate high amounts of red meat, but also high amounts of fruits and vegetables. There was actually a reduction in the risk of cancer in people who ate high amounts of red meat, also with high amounts of fruits and vegetables, indicating that the effect of red meat on cancer is probably more of an effect of people who eat more red meat tend to have lower overall diet quality. But again, the effect of red meat on cancer in the research literature is not consistent. Some studies say yes, some studies say no. It's inconsistent. Dietary fibers effect on cancer, cardiovascular disease, and mortality is not inconsistent. It is very consistent. I am aware of no studies, none, zero, zilch, that do not show at least a small reduction in risk from increasing dietary fiber intake. And most show a dose response of dietary fiber intake, reducing the risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. So people want to talk about 
longevity hacks and ice baths and fasting windows and red light therapy and grounding mats and all this shit that probably doesn't matter. If they're not eating over at least 20 grams of fiber per day, you are stepping over $100 bills to pick up pennies. One of the easiest and most consistent ways that you can reduce your risk of early death, cardiovascular disease, and cancer is to consume sufficient dietary fiber. From what sources, you may ask? It appears that most sources of dietary fiber consistently reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all-cause mortality, but fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and yes, people who hate carbs, even cereal fiber. Now, when I say cereal fiber, I don't mean Lucky Charms. The term cereal is actually a type of grain, not just what you pour into a bowl and put milk in, or some of you pour milk in and then put the cereal in, which you're psychopaths, but either way. The effect is very consistent, and it really is not that difficult to get 20 grams of fiber in per day. If you are not tracking your fiber intake, you really should be. That's why our app Carbon Diet Coach, in the Nutrients tab, you can go in and see your daily fiber intake. You should really be aiming to get at least 20 grams a day, and preferably, and preferably about 15 grams per thousand calories of dietary intake. So for me, I'm about 3,300 calories per day. I try to get 40 to 50 grams of fiber in per day. That also means I spend a significant amount of portion of my life on the toilet, and there is the downside. But I will have longer to spend on the toilet in my life based on the research data. If you want the real longevity hack, make sure you're eating enough fiber. If you're interested in my app, Carbon Diet Coach, you can click the link in the description, go sign up and subscribe today, and I will catch you guys next week.